Tim Walls is the Harris campaign's pick for VP. The Minnesota governor and veteran congressman claims to be pro-gun. In fact, Gifford seems to think Walls is the spitting image of a gun owner, but is that true? Hey guys, I'm Tiffany and you're watching One in the Chamber, the show that teaches you how to be a better gun rights activist. Recently, Kamala Harris announced her VP pick, Tim Walls. And if you don't know who that is, that's okay. Walls was not really a national figure until now, and he's currently the governor of Minnesota and has been since 2018. And before that, he was a congressman representing Minnesota's rural first district. Walls was not the expected pick for Harris. In fact, he wasn't even on the radar until very recently. The expected pick was Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. Behind him was Arizona Senator Mark Kelly. Kamala's choice to go with Walls is interesting politically. Walls is much more of a progressive, far-left pick than Shapiro, or Kelly, who are considered moderate Democrats, even though they're both extremely anti-gun. And recently, the media has attempted to portray Walls as a gun guy, seeking gun reform. And by reform, of course, they mean destroy. Walls has done a lot of harm to the gun owners in Minnesota. We recently covered his record in an episode of Minuteman Moment that we will link in the description if you're interested. But I'll summarize it here. As governor, Walls signed universal background checks into law. He used red flag laws to unconstitutionally disarm 71 Minnesotans. And he banned lawful semi-automatic firearms with ATF approved binary triggers. He's also called for an assault weapons ban repeating the think tank generated talking point weapons of war. Well, I think we can we can deal with background checks. We can make sure there's universal background checks. Uh, we can make sure, as we said earlier, that, that we're part of the national effort to get these weapons of war off the streets, making sure that that's something Minnesota's a part of. I've been voting for common sense legislation that protects the Second Amendment, but we can do background checks. We can do CDC research. We can make sure we don't have reciprocal carry among states, and we can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. So if this is all true, why is the Harris campaign leaning into Walt's gun ownership and hunting hobby? They're leaning into this fact so hard, they're selling camo hats. Well, the answer to that question may lie in a recent article from Slate. The article titled, Fuds of America Unite, features an image of Tim Walls with a Beretta shotgun front and center. And if you're not familiar with the term FUD, it's traditionally used for hunters and gun owners who use the phrase, I support the Second Amendment, but meaning that they support gun control. And in the article, the author summarizes that the Harris campaign is making a bet and picking Walls as VP. That bet, the author details, is that most gun owners in the US are FUDs. The author goes on to support this claim by saying that while many gun owners support the Second Amendment, they're not interested in owning what he refers to as military grade weapons, which I can only assume means an AR-15. Here's the issue with this statement. Nearly half of hunters who hunt with a centerfire rifle use an AR-15. We know this thanks to 2022 Winchester Ammo Consumption Survey. And maybe this author didn't realize that because he still thinks that racking his shotgun to scare off home intruders is a smart move. The author of the Slate article ends the piece by explaining that the addition of Tim Walls to the ticket is of course meant to drive out swing voters in swing states by being an olive branch of sorts to those the author describes as futs. And there's another sinister aspect to this though. According to a report from the New York Post, more than 10 million hunters and gun owners are not registered to vote in the United States, with major numbers of them in swing states like Pennsylvania and Michigan. Now the camel hat the Harris campaign is selling is starting to make a lot more sense. Harris certainly doesn't need help courting Chappelle Rowan fans. According to the New York Post article, if even 2% of these hunters and gun owners voted, it could swing the election in either direction. This is why it's extremely important to get your fellow gun owners to vote, especially if you live in swing states like Wisconsin, Michigan, or Pennsylvania. But reportedly, gun owners have not responded well to voter registration efforts according to Vote for America. In fact, an advisor to Vote for America said that the most common response from gun owners during their outreach is, my vote doesn't count, the system is rigged. And we hear this all the time from gun owners. Our comment section often gets filled with the comments saying that there's no point in voting. And I'm here to tell you today that it's 
this sort of mentality that keeps gun owners from dominating the political realm. The more active gun owners get in all levels of politics from the local level all the way up to the national office, the less that massive billionaire funded organizations will be able to lobby to restrict our rights. In fact, the mentality of thinking that your vote doesn't matter is exactly what the anti-gun lobby wants. They want you to stay home on election day thinking that the outcome has already been decided because then they have a large your chance of success. The numbers don't lie. If the Harris campaign didn't think there was something to gain in showcasing Tim Walsh's affinity for hunting, they wouldn't do it. The author of the Slate article is correct when he says that the Harris campaign is making a bet on gun owners wanting gun control. Let's get out this November and prove them wrong.